You look good. Well, thank you. Thank you. Well, no, anyway. uh, this is difficult. This has just happened, you know. This has happened. Good deal. So, you have two degrees in acting. That's, that's, that's a commitment. Yeah, so, uh, I do. When did you know that? that well, I mean, two degrees. No, no, I have, well, sorry, I have an undergrad and a master's. But yeah, the, the undergrad is just, we're just figuring things out on undergrad. You know, undergrad is good. It's not, we're not, we're not sure what we're doing in undergrad, right? Yeah, so. It's a degree, though. It is a degree. <laughs> I paid for it. All right. Still I may be still. I may still be paying for it. I'm not sure. So when did you know that I'm going to make this happen? That's it. Um, I, I don't think I ever knew that until I actually started working in the business. You know, you want. I think when you're young, you have a lot of energy, you have a lot of focus, and you have a lot of determination. And then the older you get. The, the, you, know, you get beaten down, you get a little more jaded, uh, life hits you in the face, uh, bills come, and you start doubting yourself. Even if you made progress, you start, you know, you take account of where you are and you start feeling like, I don't know if this is possible sometimes. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't think I told a lot of people this um, specifically. I think I talked about it in some articles here and there. But I think I was 32, 33, I was getting ready to just call it quits. Not because I had worked or wasn't working. I just wasn't doing things I wanted to do and I wasn't working in the way I wanted to work and I wasn't getting the opportunities that I wanted to get. So I kind of was like, you know, I held myself in a certain regard and I said, look, if I'm not going to do it this way, I think as far as where I'm concerned, I feel like I should probably look for something else to do. Um, passions or not, I was like, I'm getting older and I don't want to wait tables the rest of my life. You know, it wasn't about, you know, uh, pride or anything like that, but I just wanted to have a consistent lifestyle and um, and working intermittently in the business sometimes becomes frustrating. So what I was doing was, you know, I was working in a restaurant and I was working as an actor and I could have quit the restaurant, but I was sort of, I'm, a, I'm from a blue collar family, so I'm used to working. So I'm not, I, I know friends, like I tell you, there's a lot of friends, I'm sure there's people in this audience, who they were just happy to be on unemployment. That they, my, I got friends who they were, they were actors and they were just, when they weren't working, they would sign for unemployment. There's nothing wrong with that. But I, just, I never did it. I just, I just couldn't do it because it was like, well, I can work. I mean, I could find a job. It wasn't necessarily the job I wanted, but it was a job. So I didn't have to sit around and wait for a check to come in. And all, you know, all, although I had already contributed to the unemployment, I should, be, I should have been happy to take it because I'd already given money for years. But something about me, I was just like, no, I'm just going to go to work, even if I didn't want to. Um, and then years went by and I was working more and I would just keep the restaurant job as a backup because psychologically I felt like, hey, if I need to, I'll go back. Um, which was, which is why, you know, when that Jeffrey Owens thing came out, you probably heard about that with a guy, they found this actor who used to be on the comedy show and he was a Trader Joe's. You know, I, I love that story because it was an honest, honest day's work and he was working to do something to put food on the table, he wasn't paying anybody for money, he wasn't asking for a handout, and for, you know, whoever the people were, it wasn't a woman who took the picture because she had no intention of actually trying to shame him, she just was wanting to, you know, take a picture of him, because that's what people do sometimes, you know. And then I think Fox News took this and turned around somewhere else, but ultimately, that is ultimately what America is about. It's about, that's what all of us are about, and actors sometimes are separated from, 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 from guys who are going to do the 9 to 5 job because they think, well, you're an actor. You make so much money, you know, you live this way and we live this way and, you know, I, I get that, that that's what it seems like, but what people don't realize is most of the actors are people who started out in the same position you started out. Not a lot of actors are born into wealth, you know, we, we kind of found our way into a nice, decent living, but we worked our way up, we were sacrificing a lot, we were working three or four jobs, grinding it out, you know, some people were homeless sometimes, people, you know, they, they, they sacrificed a lot. People always want to go, well, what does it take to achieve your dreams? Well, for actors and artists, a lot of times there's no money in it for so long. You're literally starving. You know, you're literally like just trying to make ends meet. And not everybody wants to do that. You know, I'm not, I don't want to be homeless. I didn't want to be living out of my car. So I, um, I, didn't, I never had to do that. But I'm just saying that when you're an actor, you never know what you're going to have to do. So I, I always appreciate that story of Jeffrey Owens because it, it's like, hey, I, I'm, I'm working. I'm not ashamed of it. And I'm going to continue to work. And I'm going to put food on the table. And if I get another acting job, great. But if not, I'm going to still go work because I need to. Um, so I love that. I love that about him. I love that about you know the, uh, our profession. We are we are artists, but we are also our laborers, and we have done that before too. So you have uh, some successful people around you. Your your you've got Viola Davis, your cousin, your brother. He's pretty cool. He's a secret service agent. 
and your wife, which is pretty cool, is a PhD, which, woo! Yeah, cool, cool. School, 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 more school. school. <laughs> She has one PhD, two masters, and I think a you know a bachelor. Yeah, lots, of <laughs> lots of degrees. Yeah. So does having the su successful people around you help push you to? Um, you know, I always, you know, my, you know, we, I guess part of your environment can be one thing. I think, you know, my parents didn't go to college. My mom went to high school, got a degree, got a uh, graduated, got a diploma. My dad only went to sixth grade because <clears throat> his dad passed away, and so he was the oldest, and he had to stop him back in those days. It's like, you know, you needed someone to sort of take care of family. He was the oldest son, and he had two younger brothers and two younger sisters, so it was up to him to sort of go out and start working. So even though that was the case for them, luckily they knew that education still was the right direction for the kids because we would eventually become successful or at least have some sort of chance that we went to um, college, and, they, and even though they did not. So we all went to college and got a degree of some sort, and then, um, you know, it's just one of those things they instill in your education. You've got to figure a way out to sort of like have a set of skills or something you can offer, otherwise you're going to be lost. So I think it's more of a, of, of a hard work determination. Even now, like my wife, her parents are from uh, Eastern Europe or Central Europe, and the uh, same kind of mentality over there, just work, work, work. You know, like they were almost would work. It's almost like the Jamaican mentality, like yeah, they work, they work. I mean, like they work for nothing. It, 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 I think, you know, it's not just about doing the job, it's about doing it right, it's about uh, if you need something extra, they'll do it, they want to make sure you're pleased, you know, a lot of people don't have that pride now, it's like, they can barely do any work, you show the work, you've got a frown on your face, they don't want to be there, you're, you're paying them, but they don't feel like their life is, it's not worth it for them, so there's a certain energy that they give you, well, with them, they're like, they're happy to be there, but they also want to make sure you're pleased as, 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 the, um, as the person who's paying them because they want to have that sense of pride. And, and it, it's almost a curse because they'll grind it out and spend extra hours doing what most people wouldn't do. They want to go home. They're like, no, I'm going to finish this task, you know? And that, that's something that I think people have to sort of feel internally to make sure they're good at whatever they're doing, you know what I mean? Even if you're flipping a hamburger, you know, make sure the burger's cooked properly, right? Don't give anybody a uh, raw hamburger, right? Is that what that is? You know what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm an educator, so I have to get that education. Oh, education, there you go. I walk right into that education. So, um, you were in this show, um, some of you may have heard of it, uh, Luke Cage. Oh. Woo! Uh, did you, did you, were you a fan of comics before you auditioned? You know, um, I, I did not read Luke Cage with, uh, before I auditioned for Luke Cage. I heard of the character, but at that point I don't really know, you know, you know, X Men, Superman, uh, Spider Man, Hulk, um, Batman, uh, you know, characters like that. It was between DC and Marvel. I had, a, you know, Aquaman, obviously, all the, you know, those characters. But I did not know about Luke Cage because, you know, I don't think every comic book store carried that. I mean, I'm from South Carolina didn't have one in my small hometown, so every one of all the comics that I got came from other people from bigger places, and they didn't bring those to me, so I never, I never got a chance to read it. I'll talk about it. I have a comic shop, too. Oh, wow. That's bad. Um, so, did you read them after you got the part? I did. I did read some. Um, I found, uh, I found the aliens to be very useful. I found, uh, some of, some of the older, the older ones that the earlier comics more of the black exploitation comics. It, it was it was not as useful because we're trying to change it and take it in a different direction. Um, we had a large um, following built up already, but we needed to sort of take it in a direction that was more current, that would be more applicable to the times that we were in. You know, back then, coming out of the 1960s into the 70s, <clears throat> you had a time of era in America where you know it's like black and proud. You know, there was a, there was this you know righteous feeling and the you know the, the, the black fist you know. And, there was the Black Panthers going on, there was a movement, and it was energy that, that was there. And so it reflected the time, you know, Shaft came out, and this sort of, you know, came off the heels of that. So for Luke Cage, I think we needed something a little more, you know, reflective, a, a, a little more, um, how should I say, the guy needed to be a bit more um, thoughtful, you know, he needed to be more an educator because ultimately, or, or educational, because he read books, he contemplated things, he was, you know, he could use books, Force, but it wasn't his first thing he wanted to use because ultimately that necessarily would fix the problem. So that thoughtfulness of, of the character was more important to us to, to have him, you know, be, a, be, be of that because the time we're in right now, 
it, 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 everybody needs to be a little more thoughtful before they start doing things because actions, you know, sometimes you start stuff it's too late to like, oh, you can't do it. As my mom would say, it's too late. Once, my mom would say, uh oh. Once, once you say, when you say, uh oh, it's too late. That's what my mom would say. <laughs> so, what was the um, audition process like for Lincoln for Lincoln? It, it was it wasn't as strenuous as I think um, a lot of the processes were. The, the, the hardest part of the audition process was that I'd already had a job, luckily, and I was gainfully employed on another show. And we had started, uh, got picked up for a series pickup, and we were going to start to film. And the minute I got the news, this opportunity sort of came along. So when the biggest thing about Blue Cage is that once I got this opportunity, it kind of felt like it was a foregone conclusion that I played the character. It was just more about trying to get free from this other contract to then get an opportunity to play. So it would have been easier if I didn't have a job. And so basically relying on the showrunner, William Perrin, uh, Blake Perrin, who was the showrunner for the show that I was on, him and, uh, and, and, um, and Army, another producer, who they, they basically helped me you know, to get out of the contract at T&T. Because it was, it was a tough thing, you know, you go to your show and say, listen, I really appreciate everything you've done for me, but I have another job that I would love to pursue. And you know, that's not something people usually take well. Um, but to his credit, he was very, very supportive and um, I still, you know, appreciate it to this day. So you worked a lot with, with Kristen, so, and you did some uh, chemistry tests. So what was that whole process? It, it, it was very, you know, very straightforward. You know, I've, I've had some chemistry meetings with a lot of different people um, over the years, and you know, a lot of times, sometimes those chemistry reads are like, I, I don't know, I, I'm not even sure what we're doing in that room. It's like, you know, it's sort of like, it's like uh, they'll tell you like what the scene has it as written it says. You do this, you do that, and you just met the person. You don't even know, you know, you, know, you barely know their name. It's just like, you know, you come in, you play the scene. It, it, it can be very awkward. Um, I, I find that the chemistry. You, Reads, you have to just sort of, you, you do the scene and you have to rely on the fact that you're just going to have to see the chemistry because you, it's not, you know, everybody's not going to just start kissing somebody they just never met, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Um, and nor should it, you know, because listen, you're auditioning, you may not get a job, you know, I got to audition with like four or five girls, like, hey, you just can't keep doing that, you know. They're like, hey, how are you? All right, and action. No, you know, awkward and unsanitary probably too. <laughs> so we didn't do any of that for the like, that commercial read. It was very straightforward and they had to take a chance on um, on seeing whether it would work on, on the day is what we call it in the business. We say on the day when it's like if we use that term we're gonna film it's like we, we could be sitting here talking about a scene that we're gonna shoot and we're literally gonna shoot it in like three minutes. But we go on the day. That's how we can start the concert on the day when we do this. And that just means it's all when you actually film it. So you have to just assume that on the day it's going to work, you know, and it, it did. So I, I may have watched um, season two, episode one, the, when you were training, you're showing off your powers on loop. Mm -hmm. um, did anybody else do that? Episode I one, so season two. Yeah. I, well, I can't believe it. It's, uh, it's early, folks. I'm still in the red eye. Um, I haven't even watched season it's, two it's, yet. It's when you're doing your long jumps and the top. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. the one. Was that one? No, was that one? Yeah. That was, that was, that was, that was, that was the one. I'm not crazy, am I crazy? Yeah. It was two. Uh-huh. 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 No spoilers. So, um, how much, I mean, what, what was your routine to get into shape to play? You know, uh, you know, at this point, it's just basically, you know, trying to eat right, trying to work out a little bit. You're playing a character over years and years. It's not like a movie. You just get in shape and start, you know, popping pills, you know, sticking needles and stuff, get jacked, and then you're just like, all right, I'm good. You do this movie and you stop. Oh, you know, you do TV. It's like you have to figure out what's going to work for you on a long-term basis because I got other projects I try to do in between. And I'm trying to get locked into a point where every time I walk in the room, it's like, well, he's got to be, you know, he's got to play the big guy because he's just, you know what I mean? Like, I've gained some weight from when I first, before I started playing with Cage, so I, I have to carry that weight with me, but I'm not trying to, you know, be the biggest guy in the room every time I walk in the room, so I, I try to moderate at this point. My workout routine consists of when I can afford to get to the gym, like what, when I have time, you know. I fly to events, you know, I come back and I, I, was, I literally was uh, filming in LA for something else, so I didn't work out yesterday, I worked out the day before and the day before that, so I pretty much was on a two-day a week regimen, um, and that can be at any point in the week whenever I have time. Because I got a three-year-old daughter, um, I 
got, I got a lot of stuff going on, so I'm trying to like, you know, um, try to, you know, use my time wisely. So when we start filming again, I'll, I'll hit the gym a little harder. So let's kind of switch off of, of Luke Cage because he's done so much other stuff, and you're talking about different roles. But you did motion capture in Halo for the video yeah. game, which is one of my favorite. So, what was, what was the whole motion capture experience? Oh man, motion capture is fun. I mean, you basically just walk around with a, like a leotard on, um, and there's like dots on your face and your whole body, and you put a cameras all over your head and stuff. And you pretty much do the same thing over and over all day long, and wait for them to say stop, and then you do it again. And it, 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 it's one of the, I can tell you, it's one of the cushier jobs you can get in this business because. There's a lot of things you can do. I mean, listen, if you're working indoors in a climate controlled environment, that in itself is, is, is heavy. Because a lot of times, you know, we film, nobody knows how cold it is, you know, when we're filming or how late it is. Almost nothing good happens after 3 o'clock, 3 in the morning. And we're filming like 3 to 6 in the morning to wait for the sun to come up. I mean, we're, we're filming, um, I think episode one where uh, Lucy Lou was directed at, there was an explosion, a truck explosion. That, you know, we started filming that whole thing around midnight, that whole scene, they blew the truck up around midnight, and so by the time we got to sunrise, we were racing, uh, the sun was coming up, we are trying to get the scene, it, it's just so much that goes on, where it takes so much time, people don't realize how much time it takes to shoot something, you go, if you stand on set, you go, what is going on, like, I, this is insane, like, it was, like, nothing, it seems like nothing happened for hours, and then all of a sudden, there's everyone in a hurry, um, it's a very strange situation, so anytime I'm shooting indoors, it's a very good day for me. So, do you prefer doing more TV roles, like Bishop when you play that, or Good Wife, roles? yeah. Like Big Willie Little. Yeah, you know, um, no, no, like, you know, Good Wife was a great experience. I, I love doing uh, television. I like doing good projects. I would say to myself, like, I want to do a couple. I want to do a few things. I think one thing that I want to have, have be in a film that's in every festival. And at one point, I want to like, see all the festivals. And I also want to be, I want to diversify. I always want to just be in different genres and different, different, um, uh, to just be exposed to different audiences. So, like, my hiatus, I had a year off now. Um, so, I did this movie called Skin that was in Toronto with Jamie Bell, and it's an interesting film. And it's a big um, cast, um, you know, a bunch of, you know, great people. Bill Camp, um, um, uh, Vera Farmiga, uh, uh, um, uh, Daniel McDonald. It's just a, it's a, it's a wonderful cast. So we, uh, we did that.